It's soon Christmas and it's a time of reflection. Automation is changing really fast, much faster than any of the previous years that I've been working with it. This year has been immensely fun. We did some fantastic projects, most protected by non-disclosure agreements, unfortunately, but luckily not all of them. This is the world's greatest goalkeeper because it's a robot. And it's really, really fast. And this is Ronaldo, the world's greatest soccer player. PLCs and industrial automation can be used for so much more than manufacturing. And every week I get the luxury of meeting people that use them for all kinds of use cases. I've always said it and will say it again. The best thing with industrial automation is the people I get to work with. The talent in our industry is just mind boggling. Even though this year was filled with fun, I think next year is going to be even more exciting with lots of news for us PLC programmers. Here are three things that I look forward to in 2026. Number one, Beckhoff's PLC++. Not surprisingly, I look forward to the first release of Beckhoff's PLC++. For anyone that's watching this video and asking what's PLC++, I made another video about it that I'll provide a link to. Now, the number one reason I look forward to PLC++ is the pure text storage they have of the source code. It's, I mean, it's, it's such a basic thing, really, but it's exactly for this reason it's so useful. The change from the horrendous XML markup of the current PLC editor to what PLC++ will offer will ease the pain of thousands of Twinket developers' source control management. There are a ton of other features in PLC++ that I look forward to, which I I talk about them in my other video, but the plain text storage is the one that has the biggest impact on my daily work. Now, PLC++ was initially supposed to have launched in, I think, Q4 of this year, but Beckhoff have pushed the date back to next year. I think Twink at 4026 was delayed for like, I don't know, some, something like two years or something from the original date. With the constant pushbacks of the date for Twink at 4026, you would imagine Beckhoff should have learned one thing or two about about making estimations. Maybe the B in Beckhoff stands for bad estimates? I don't know. I'll provide some reading material in the video description for the people that want to improve their estimates for software. Or if you want me to make a video on how to work with making estimations for software, please drop a comment below. Either way, I look forward to PLC++. Beckhoff are making something really, really good here. The second thing I look forward to for next year is Siemens Cymatic AX. Now again, for anyone that doesn't know what I'm talking about, I've made a whole video about the Cymatic AX that I'll provide a link to. I visited the SPS fair a few weeks ago and visited Siemens while I was there. I was honestly surprised on how much progress has been made since I saw AX the last time. Depending on your requirements, you can now use AX completely independently for PLC projects. Previously, AX was solely used for the, for the PLC programming to write the PLC code, but TIA Portal was required for the hardware configuration. Now AX also supports hardware configurations for certain models of their PLCs, and the way they store the hardware configuration is excellent from a version control perspective. They also showed me some, some additional stuff like the HMI stuff that they're doing, so I was very, very impressed. There's obviously lots of other stuff missing that we take for granted, like motion control and safety, but I'm sure the AX team will get there. I think Symmetic AX has the potential to, at least from the perspective of software development, to make a vastly superior product over what Beckhoff has to offer, even including PLC++. The big turnoff for Symmetic AX is their price tag, which last I checked here costs like 1200 euros per year. And I know I'm gonna get all these comments and people say, yeah, but 1200 euros isn't so expensive. And, and of course, of course we can afford it, right? Of course my company can afford it, but that's not the point. The point is that there's all the other thousands of people like students, unemployed and others that don't have the possibility to buy the AX. They all, you know, they just wanna simply download the software and play around with it a little bit and without spending their last savings. And they're all basically locked out from learning the platform and locked out from our industry, effectively gatekeeping them out. And that's all potential people that will buy Siemens hardware in the future. I can take myself as an example. I mean, many, many years ago when I downloaded Twinket uh, from Beckhoff, I thought it was, it, I thought it was kind of neat and I could just download the software and start to start to play around with it a little bit. Surely Beckhoff, they didn't make those 1200 euro on me back then. 
But considering all the projects I've done with them now and all the thousands of people I've educated with my Twinka 3 course here on here on YouTube, I'm pretty sure they made those 1200 euros back, probably many thousands of times over. So I saw Siemens using the word community in some of their material and for the AX and you know, you're not building a community by putting a 1200 euro price tag on your software. You're killing the community before it's even born. I look forward to use the AX for my first AX client. That's definitely going to happen, probably in 2026. But Siemens will have to change their approach to the pricing of the Symmetic AX. The third thing is something very general. I see more and more people applying some best practices from the software industry into the automation industry. And I see more and more companies popping up creating services and products around it. So, for example, whenever we get to a new client today, we never have to convince them that they should be using version control for their software. I'm not talking about zipping files and naming them with a the date. I'm talking about using a professional version control system like, like Git or, or Subversion. So a lot of companies we work with, they're even open for approaches like tester and development. And if you ask me 10 years ago about the state of industrial automation software, it was completely, completely different. My point with this is that I can just somehow... So how do I explain it? It's, it's winter outside right now, and despite this, I get this cozy uh, spring feeling in me, in me. You know, I get this... You, you know when spring comes, and you can just take your bike out, and you hear the birds sing, and you, you just feel hope and about the future, and everything just feels good. That's what I'm feeling about the automation industry. Things are changing really fast, and in a good way, and in a good direction. When I'm talking about modern software development practices in industrial automation, I don't feel alone anymore. There are many others out there talking about these things uh, nowadays. So, sorry if this point wasn't as specific as the two previous ones, but I, I hope you know what I mean. Anyway, that's all I had to say. I'm curious to hear what you look forward to in 2026, so I would appreciate if you could leave a comment below with your thoughts. Until next time, happy coding!